and here is Nate Blair. He's a group manager here in the Strategic Energy Analysis Center at NREL, and he has really been leading the effort for SAM and PV Watts for several years now, um, and I'll let him uh, give a little bit more about his background. Thanks, Nate. Thank you, Debbie, and thank you for setting this up, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, sorry, it was a couple minutes late there, but um, and I think we are interested in uh, questions, um, and so I think what we want to do is be uh, available uh, through this process, and, and ideally, we'll probably end up with a lot of questions from everybody, um, and w what I wanted to cover today is a real... Uh, scatter shot on a lot of things, um, and then and then a, a little more of a detailed uh, discussion, and maybe pull up a website or two on a couple of things specifically uh, that that a couple of people have asked about, and and some of the ways that we specifically support other web developers. I would add that. Uh, over the last few years, we've supported a number of the SunChat Incubator awardees uh, as well, um, and uh, we have a number of different um, uh, kind of ongoing efforts with them, uh, and I assume you're all familiar with uh, the Incubator uh, program and the awards that have been given out during that. So um, why don't we dive in and... Uh, Going. So um, I'm going to start. Map search is not something you likely will use much of, but we have a suite of kind of tools and capabilities and data sets, and I'm just going to cover them really quickly um, to make sure our our websites are sometimes uh, labyrinthian, uh, and we know where everything is, but uh, a lot of other people uh, have have trouble. Um, searching the NREL website, for example. So map search is a place where we try to collect all of the maps that we've, uh, that NREL has generated in various reports and projects, and we have a searchable interface for that. The Solar Prospector uh, is another tool that we have online that provides access to hourly data sets uh, for the U.S., um, both year by year and detailed hourly data sets plus a lot of overlapping map data um, and we have a lot of a lot of detailed geospatial data and this is a good entry point into what data sets are publicly available that we have. OpenPV is a tool that NREL supports for DOE which is trying to capture details, high level details about every single PV system in the country um, and so we have uh, according to this 173,000 it's been a little bit, uh, last few months, it's been a little bit slow. Uh, there was there were so many systems put in uh, in 2013 and 14 that it sort of broke the database structure that we had, actually. So it's been, re, it's been in process of retooling um, and will be updated shortly if it isn't already. Um, Opening Eye uh, is another uh, huge wealth of information uh, both nationally and internationally. So depending on how uh, important that piece of it is to you. Uh, but there's also a lot of really good, uh, if you go to the tools page on OpenEI, um, you can search, for example, on all the green button tools. There's a lot of solar tools. So it's a good way to make sure that you've uh, kind of covered the, the boardwalk on, on what tools are available. Um, a lot of people ask us about cost data. We have the Transparent Cost Database, which sits on top of OpenEI, um, which has a lot of a, a lot of published data on cost. Now, since you're likely in PV, PV industry is moving fast. Costs are moving fast. It's hard to for the publication world to keep up with uh, keep up with that. But there's a lot of uh, good data in there on cost. Um, and another one is the utility rate database. So uh, this is something that I've worked on personally, and we have created and gathered, uh, all, you know, I think it says 48,000 rates here. I think it's over 50,000 rates. Um, and Illinois State University just finished a uh, three-year project to populate the rate database. 
Um, we don't. Uh, uh, we don't uh, claim that we have up-to-the-minute rates, but we are working to maintain a six-month, uh, at, at most, a six-month lag in, in rate data. And so this involves having an actual person go, pull up the PDF of the rate, look at that, grab the data, put it into the rate database, and update any, any older rates. And so that uh, website is is up and running, and we use it in our system advisor model, which we'll talk about in a minute. And people at NREL use this database to look at uh, particularly the value of solar calculations and, and looking at you know, what's, what's the relative value. So, um, so PV Watts is another tool that many of you have probably run into, um, and we can delve into this. Uh, with some questions as well. Um, and I think it's important to cover what's recently happened with PV Watts. Over the last several years, we've been working to upgrade the user interface, uh, make it more flexible, hand different, handle different kinds of weather files. Um, if you are familiar with PV Watts version 1, it used NREL's TMY2 weather file data sets. There's since that been available TMY2, TMY3. Uh, 10 kilometer gridded data um, and uh, sorry we got a couple of questions on here. Yeah, well one one question on kind of increasing our volume. Can we, okay. Hopefully that's better. I just put it all the way to max. And maybe Nate can get a little closer to the microphone. Yeah. So we'll, we'll work on that. Um, so we have that. Uh, so PV Watts has, has, has gone through several transformations. One is we've released a new user interface. Uh, we left the old versions running for very, you know, for legacy reasons. Uh, and then in this summer, so September specifically, uh, we released a update to the calculations of PV Watts. So using the same so we've updated in large part the, the D rate values or what we're calling the losses terms now to be representative of uh, modern uh, systems and modern installation techniques. Uh, so uh, probably the largest example of that is that it used to be that the inverter efficiency was defaulted to 92%. It's now 96%. Um, uh, and some of the other loss terms have been, have been changed as well such that using the same weather file data, uh, so it's the same TMY2 file, you typically see an increase of 7 to 9%, uh, up to 10% over what version 1 with the version 1 defaults would have shown you. Um, and so we have just now, over the holidays, retired uh, version 1 and version 2 completely. Um, and uh, and so we're, we're working on... Uh, uh, kind of cleaning all that up, and I think we're pretty set for right now. Uh, there's some potential upgrades to some of the weather data sets coming in the near future, but um, that's not been announced, and, and that will drop in relatively easily now that we've redone the interface not to be focused on a particular data set. So one of the questions is related to uh, PV Watt source code data. Would they be able to get access to the um, source code itself? Is it open source? No. No. No, so I, and I can talk about that in a little bit, a little more. Um, so we've, uh, the old version one code was open source. We we're working through the process with tech transfer to make the new source, uh, it wasn't open source, but you could license it from NREL for a small fee. Uh, we're working to, with the new code, uh, through the lawyers to, um, uh, uh, sorry, to, establish copyright effectively with DOE and therefore be able to license the source code. That's going to take a little while, uh, but as we move through this presentation, we have a number of other mechanisms to access the PV Watts capabilities. Um, and so uh, we'll be able to, let me, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, there was a question about the utility rate database. Um, oh, in competitive markets, yeah, the, in competitive markets, it still looks basically, it still uses the same mechanism and grabs the, the company's 
rates for residential and commercial off of their uh, website. Um, so it does not uh, deal with uh, some of that. Crest is a uh, spreadsheet finance tool more for policymakers. Uh, could be a good way to look at validating your cash flow uh, techniques uh, and uh, um, is, a, is a good entry point into some of the project finance issues around solar uh, if you're interested in that. And then um, SAM is our is kind of our flagship PV uh, modeling tool uh, from NREL. Um, and we'll talk more about kind of some of the uh, pieces of it um, in a little bit. But it's, it's unique. Uh, it's different than something like PV Syst, uh, which just really does the performance calculation. SAM also marries the hourly or now sub-hourly performance of a PV system with uh, one of several cash flow models, either a residential owner, a commercial building owner, a utility scale. Uh, we have several different utility scale finance models, leverage partnership flips, sale lease back, uh, single owner, um, and uh, we've put a lot of work into marrying those two together so that you have, so that you can look at changes in the system and, you know, uh, efficiency or using a different module or using a different inverter and how that impacts your, your financial picture of the system. Um, we have a lot of technologies involved. Uh, you'll see, you can see here that uh, PV, solar water heating, CSP, uh, geothermal wind, and biomass. By far, the largest chunk of funding has uh, has been from the solar program over the last uh, 10 years, um, and so we uh, are, are deepest in uh, both PV and CSP modeling. Um, and you can see across the bottom here, it kind of talks about the workflow. Weather data, we can take all kinds of different weather data, detailed system specs. Most of our systems have probably several hundred inputs that you can effectively uh, change. Um, that produces the hourly or sub-hourly energy production. Combine that with um, detailed cost data, utility rates if you want, incentives if you want, um, and then financing options, and then that gets to the uh, total package of, of, of metrics. Uh, you know, our, we, we have a lot of users that just use it for the performance part, uh, annual, monthly, hourly output, uh, but we have a number of uh, users, particularly within NREL and sort of the analysis community that, that, are, that are interested in some of the financial calculations. So the SAM tool is a downloadable desktop tool for Windows and Mac, uh, and we just rebuilt it. Uh, uh, rebuilt the user interface is the most obvious thing, but we did some stuff in the back end to make it a lot faster. We allowed it to use parallel threads. Uh, we have a 3D shading tool, which I think um, is buried in a lot of the sort of release emails, but is, is really valuable um, and, uh, and potentially useful to, to some of you. That uh, can be a standalone tool, or you can use it from within SAM. Uh, to calculate you know, the impact of obstructions and other things. And, uh, it's not meant to be, uh, so if you've used something like PV Soul before, they allow you to do all kinds of, or, or Rhino 3D is another one where you can build up and it, it looks, it's much, it's got a lot of realism. It's like a, it's almost like a uh, video game. Um, and then the sun travels across. We're, we have a little bit of a blockier sort of approach uh, so you can't put windows and doors on your building. It's just a big Lego for the most part. But you can put in detailed trees and obstructions and poles and uh, various shapes. And that's uh, uh, we're using that now or, or plan to be using that to also test some of the other shading tools on the marketplace. Um, we can go back to that in a minute. Uh, the, so. The SAM software development kit gets to the question of is the PVWatt source code available. This uh, is a software development kit that provides access to the SAM engine. So all of the PV production modeling, all the finance modeling, the utility bill calculation, um, the uh, various pieces, everything except sort of the graphing and user interface pieces 
are available through the SDK. We've compiled it on several platforms, and, and we're open if you have another platform that you want. And we've built wrappers uh, in several languages, C Sharp, MATLAB, Python, Java, um, and it should say C++ on there as well. Um, and, um, and we have a user interface to, to develop scripts to, to run the engine. Um, and then we have several hundred pages of documentation about the functions and how they get called, et cetera. Um, and so the idea is that one way to access the SAM engine or the PVWAT source code is via this SDK. So you download this, you put it on your system, you make function calls to it from whatever, ideally whatever kind of environment you're working in, um, and then that provides the data back to you. Uh, this way, when we release a new version in November, for example, we can put up a new version of the SDK. We don't have to go through the legal office to do any of that. Um, and so we can iterate on this much more quickly than we could on providing source code. And you can get this for free, uh, whereas source code typically Enro likes to license that for a fee. So I think uh, for most, most needs, this is likely to be uh, what you would what you would want to access, um, and it's going to be faster than trying to also kind of determine what to do with a, a chunk of source code. So that's our thinking on that. Um, I don't know that you guys are maybe going to be all that interested in this tool, but J JEDI is another tool, and there's a PV version of it online, uh, Jobs and Economic Development. There's also spreadsheet versions of all the JEDI tools uh, that might be useful. NREL licenses on the back end a bunch of data from another kind of uh, economic development tool called MPlan uh, out of Minneapolis, and we update regularly the, the the economic data here. So you can say, hey, I want to build a 100 megawatt uh, PV system in this county uh, in Nevada, and it can tell you, well, it'll create this many jobs while it's being built, and it'll create this much economic impact collaterally via hotel stays and, you know, people going to the gas station and eating at the diner, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the kind of analysis you can do with this tool. Um, the other thing that I think is important to cover is web services. And I think this is probably the page that might be of most interest to, to all of you. Um, if we have at NREL something called the developer.nrel.gov website, and on it, there are a variety of web services available that are maintained here at NREL. Um, we have uh, probably dozens of PV companies using, in particular, the PV Watts web service uh, off of here. This one talks about version 4 we ha and version 5. Um, so it's talking before about the transition we made. Version 5 is the one that goes with the new version of PV Watts and has um, you know, the, the slightly updated calculations. Um, and either one, you can provide a different set of D rates or loss terms to if you want to. But um, I think I think for most people, most uh, companies, this is going to be the fastest and quickest way to get going on doing a PV watts type calculation within your own tool. Um, so I would recommend using that. It also behind the scenes goes out and grabs the appropriate weather file for you so you don't have to worry about having the weather files on your own system. Um, this, the version 5 API here is in fact what we use uh, with the PV Watts online service. So we, we have that, we call this web service and we pass back the data through the through the web tool. Um, in the PV Watts web tool, we also access these desire incentives, um, and uh, we do not use in PV Watts the complex utility rate data, but we do have that available through the SAM interface, um, and uh, continue to continue to work through that. If you need just kind of basic solar resource data for a particular location, you don't need a performance calculation. Then I think the solar resource data uh, item is. Um, uh, I think we have, yeah, that's right. Uh, um, and the solar resource data is available there. Sorry, a couple more questions are coming up here. Um, so, uh, so these are a lot of the, 
the um, data sets that are available. I would say um, I'm not going to talk too much about PBDAC because that's kind of a more specific use case, but on the um, desire incentive, for some of you that are in the loop on incentives know that there's um, uh, there's a lot of uh, there's been a delay in, in getting updates to the desire website um, and we've felt that sort of behind the scenes uh, we just had a meeting uh, with them so desires run out of North Carolina State University and there was a lot of contractual things between uh, delays due to uh, due to a contractual update between them and getting funding from DOE um, and so uh, but they said they're going to launch uh, at the end of January uh, the improved desire website plus uh, some kind of feed API feed so we don't know the details of that yet and our hope is that that will replicate some of what was done quantitatively uh, if you're familiar with the site, you know that there's a lot of paragraphs of text about various incentives and what we need for tools, obviously, is someone to go through that text and pull out the actual numbers. Um, and some of those numbers have to be kind of interpreted and calculated from that. So, um, uh, so there's a question, is there a slide that compares features and capabilities to PVSYST? Uh, no. Um, PV Syst, uh, I mentioned, it's it's one of the uh, kind of industry leaders uh, in terms of PV plant uh, production calculations. It's particularly been used um, and accepted by banks uh, for financing of larger utility scale systems, um, Solar City, Sunrun, uh, some other uh, kind of residential and commercial installers typically use a PV watts calculation. Um, and in fact, you know, Solar City for my house, their number matches exactly to PV watts. So, um, so they use more on the they're more on the PV watt side. They will sometimes come in and do an enhanced uh, shading analysis for you. Um, we had the SAM engines being used by several larger uh, kind of installer companies, um, but uh, PV Syst has uh, has uh, capabilities that are very similar to what SAM can do on the utility scale uh, side and, and obviously people use it for commercial as well. Um, and they have a 3D shading tool as do we. Both tools produce a loss chart. I think there's just kind of been a historical acceptance of PV Sys, particularly by the banking community. Um, but some, uh, some uh, organizations are now allowing you to use something other than PV Sys uh, specifically SAM or some other comparable tools. Last year we did a validation that compared outputs of PV Sys, SAM, PV Sol, uh, Red Screen, and PV Watts against nine real sets of performance data. And so you can go look that up on the SAM website if you like. There's a question related to green button data and if it re um, incorporates utility rate data. Do you happen to know the answer to that? Um, well, so there's typically not so typically the utility is providing you as the customer um, your detailed billing and usage data um, and then you take that information and provide it to one of I don't know 30 people that have kind of come up with green button tools and the value here is that all the utilities are providing this data with the same standard and in the same format and so that you can do this for various utilities not all utilities are supporting green button data providing there's a lot that has to go in on the back end at the utility level um, and so I think I think for each utility that provides that data baked into the comparison between uh, energy consumption that you're buying from the utility and the cost of that there's the rate is in there but it's not clear that there's nothing in the green button data standard that uh, that includes the provisioning of the rate data. Okay, I didn't think so. And and you're right that it's if the rate data is in there, it's kind of baked into those numbers, and it's based on the utility. Each, yeah. each utility is different. Right. And we do have a green button seminar webinar tomorrow. So oh. I have Marty Burns that will be presenting. Tomorrow. Great. I look forward to that. Um, oh, sorry. Sorry. Can you get? Yes, the I last can get us that. Back? It's the last one. Yeah. 
not a Mac guy. <laughs> so we have a, a number of different tools. I think that um, if I understand what you guys are trying to do, I think for, for many of you, the PVWatts web service um, and perhaps the SDK. The SDK allows you to do module-specific calculations, inverter-specific calculations. It allows you to um, use weather data other than what's provided through the PVWatts web service. Um, it allows you to um, access more of the financial calculations uh, as well. And so there's a number of different um, more complex calculations that you can do uh, with the SAM SDK that you can't do with the PVWatts web service. But for a basic performance calculation, I would use the PVWatts web service within the United States in particular. Um, and uh, I think that's roughly it. Um, uh, I don't think I think we've touched on every question that have that's come across so far. So if you guys have any other questions, you could submit them that way. Oh, we do have some. Hang on. Okay. Um, let's see. They just have formulas of PV watts instead of real production values captured by the inverters. If yes, this will make it easy. It will make it easier for us to avoid um, connecting with APIs from inverters. Um, so this is a, and then he has this, another question. Yeah. How do you compute the amount of production? Okay, so there's two two questions here related to PV watts. Um, I think the first one is uh, dealing with how accurate is the data sets and formulas, and can we use that instead of um, the real production value from the inverter? I think that uh, that brings up two key questions, two basic questions at least. One is that the PV watts tool and tools like it use a typical meteorological year. Um, and so uh, it will tell you that for an average year, this is the amount of power that your PV system will produce. So um, most years are not average. Uh, <laughs> so they're either above or below. Um, you know, we're looking at probably a 10% swing. Uh, and so um, I was just talking with someone uh, the other day about, well, you, you base it on a typical year, and then the next year the owner calls you because he's underproduced by 10%, and they think the solar resource was just less this year due to, you know, uh, volcanoes in Iceland or something. <laughs> um, and so, so there's that piece, there's that kind of interannual variability, the other thing is, is that PV watts doesn't capture, uses a lot of default values for losses. So you could have a system that's maybe poorly designed or has kind of odd shading on it, and you know you're going to have significantly less output than what PV watts maybe would predict. Or conversely, geez, you have a really well designed, well installed system that's perfectly positioned, has no shading at all. Um, and you know you end up with production that's typically higher than what PV watts uh, predicts. So I think getting a real you know a lot of companies, particularly microinverters, have real measurement systems on uh, on the output and as well as whatever you're getting from your utility if they support uh, providing you with the meter reading data. Um, uh, that's obviously going to be more accurate than what PV watts suggests. Um, and then the second question was, how do you commute, compute the dollar amount of production? Uh, so for each utility, uh, the U.S. Energy Information Agency, also known as the EIA, provides uh, average uh, utility prices. So they it's done rather grossly. So for all residential com customers with any utility, they calculate here's the amount that they all paid together is the amount of electricity that they use, and they just divide it. Um, so that's across a variety of rate structures and across a variety of uh, you know different different issues. And so people are um, so we use that, we've implemented that, we update that annually uh, within the PV watts environment. That's another. I don't think it's on there. Maybe it is um, on the web. You want to go to the web? Yeah, well, I just wanted to go to that last page. Uh, yeah, utility rate data. We actually have 
two under here. One I was talking about is the complex utility rates data from URDB. You know, there's this many tiers. The price for each tier is this. The tiers are active during these hours of the year. The second bullet on there is really the average utility rate cost. And so we provide that as well as using it within um, PV Watt. So the next question is what source of module inverter data do you recommend to use in PV Watts and SAM? Uh, in PV Watts, we've done kind of an average for uh, thin film, standard, and premium types of modules. Uh, within SAM, you can select from two other uh, public databases. One is the Sandia module database based on a lot of testing, uh, real real testing that goes on at, in, at Sandia Labs in Albuquerque. Um, the unfortunate thing there is they, only, they have less than a thousand modules in their database and they're not adding a lot. They're not funded to add a lot on a regular basis. Conversely, we have data from the CDC database, uh, which has over 11,000 modules in it. Um, we also get our inverter database from them, which has like, I think 5,000 inverters listed. Um, and that's all from a third party test lab. I, I usually recommend working with the CEC uh, module database inside of SAM uh, as a starting point just because it has the most modern up-to-date data sets. And we try to keep that as updated as, as, quick, as frequently as the CEC does. So this next question relates to exactly what you just answered, but it says, can we get a copy of the database? So you would recommend just going in through SAM? Yeah, so within SAM, all the databases now with the new version are just stored in CSV files and so you can open them in Excel and grab the data that's in there. Um, there are things that aren't in there that are on spec sheets, such as the CEC does not collect and maintain uh, shape data, so the height and the width of the panels are, is not in there, for example. So, or at least it's not in there for all, all modules if it is in there. So that's, that data is just there to calculate production from. So there are certain pieces of information about each module that aren't in there, but the CEC maintains that and uh, the value there is that any module you want to sell that you want to get a CEC rebate from in the residential market has to be in that database. Um, and so the manufacturers are highly motivated to, to be included. Okay. All right, the next question is, how do you deal with utility rates if there are multiple utilities serving the same zip code? Yeah, so that's a good question. So um, uh, in, in the, for the average rates by zip code, um, in, uh, for the, we average the average rates, uh, is I believe what's done. Uh, and our geospatial team does that when they do a merge. Um, so that can be a problem if, if, if in particular there's a, a co-op that's, you know, surrounded by Excel Energy, um, you might get a kind of inaccurate rate that way. Um, but uh, for the complex rates, what typically happens, at least in SAM and on the URDB website, is that it presents you with a list of all the rates that are, are possible within that zip code, and you are forced to then know which rate the individual system is going to be subjected to. Okay, the next one is about um, the feature on PV Watts where you can load a map and draw draw the panels on your roof. And so the question is, is that in Google Earth or some other application? Uh, that uses the Google um, Google Maps API to get the image from behind the scenes there. And then can the SDK um, provide the same level uh, of capability to select individual components like would be done by using the SAM UI. Yep. Yep, you can pick a specific um, module or inverter. Okay, can I enter data for a new module into SAM that is not in the database uh, to model with it using the API? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, within the SAM user interface, you can put in spec sheet data and it will calculate the CEC coefficients for you. Um, and that's actually a fairly powerful feature because typically, or historically, only the CEC would do that. Um, but we've added that relatively, I think we added that last year. Um, and so 
so you can take any C, any uh, kind of solid spec sheet data and, and and add that in. It won't be obviously third party tested, uh, so that's a little bit of a difference. Um, but I haven't done that through the API. So I think that's possible, but I, I can't confirm that right now if that's possible through the SDK. If not, we can. The code is in there somewhere, uh, so we can work with you to figure out uh, how to how to do that effectively. Okay, great. Um, I don't see any other new questions, so I'll give you guys one more minute to enter anything else new. What time do you have? I have 12:43. Okay. All right. So if there are um, no further questions, we can wrap up a little bit early. Um, Thank you, Nate, for participating with us. Oh, happy to do it. And and we are available uh, to support the Catalyst effort going forward. Um, and having this meeting today doesn't mean we won't uh, be willing to talk to people uh, um, later. Uh, and, uh, um, and if you have specific questions, uh, about SAM or the SAM SDK, uh, we have a support forum on the SAM website, which is answered uh, hourly, if not daily, uh, <laughs> by uh, our tech support person uh, who's dedicated to that activity. Um, and you can also ask the PBWATS uh, web API questions through that forum as well, because we don't have a, a PBWATS um, support forum website. Okay. At this point. Um, we have a question about the webinar, and yes, I did record it, and I do have Nate's slide deck, so I will send that out to everybody at the end of this um, presentation as well. Um, let's see, there's another question about the slide deck. Um, it's about, let's see, the slide deck is about 80% of the value of the recording. Can this be sent out ASAP? And yes, definitely. I'll send it out right away um, and get it to you guys, um, because I know there's a lot of links on there. Yep, and we'll be happy to also, I think we have another slide deck that's a little more focused on the SDK um, and a, a webinar on the SAM website uh, that we did on the SDK. I actually sent that link out. Um, oh, okay. But, well, actually, I think I sent the PB Watts um, link out, so let me send that one as well. So I'll send okay. a couple other um, links to that. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I will get you the slide deck, these extra little things that Nate and I just talked about, and then the recording. Hopefully, the recording sounds good, and I'll get that out for everybody who participated and those who couldn't make it as well. Um, and, yes, there's confirmation that the SDK deck would be great. Okay. <laughs> we'll, send, we'll send that link out as well. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining, and we will be holding the green button one tomorrow. Um, so we'll just be talking um, on an ongoing basis. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.